You're listening to the Doug Stanhope podcast. Yeah, that 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 bar looks shit. I hope hopefully it is. The bar looks shit downstairs. It looks like a it looks like friends. It looks like the peach pit or whatever the fuck they called it. There were two bars, weren't there? I was uh, last night because I've I've talked a few times on stage. Well, I have that one line about sometimes you might get drunk and slum it with a hipster, uh-huh. and uh, I go I don't know if they even have hipsters here, and I forgot Melbourne yeah. is hipsters. <laughs> I forgot this whole town is fucking hipsters. I don't know if they call them that, but I also wondered, and Alex can answer this for me, is. Is bogan a word? Because for the listener, bogan is a f- fucking word for white trash. Yeah, essentially. Basically. But you but can be it, a rich bogan or a poor bogan. The, the, the point is, is bogan a word like hipster where you say it offensively and they don't take it offensively? No, it's taken offensively pretty much every time. Unless it's one bogan to another, maybe. Because when you say hipster... Yeah, they're hipsters, and they know it. Yeah. It's like saying redneck. Redneck are proud of being redneck. Mm. Saying you're a redneck doesn't cause offense. They're, that's, well, it, it, that's like saying you're a patriot. You're a true American. It, it's <laughs> like the N-word. It's, it's in how you say it. It's in the tone of Bogan. All right. Well, th- th- like hipster, when you say fucking hipsters... No matter how derogatory you mean it, they don't take it that way. It's like saying lawyer. <laughs> Almost. In a different way. Yeah, I'm sure that Bogans can call each other Bogans. I'm sure it's one of those. Yeah, well, that's a pretty big it's TV show. Kinda, it's almost, it, it feels like uh, it's a, a, a racial slur where you're of the same race, so it's okay for me to call you a a bogan and the word that we heard i forget who said it and he said it so Feral. subtly yes he goes, a guy well these ferals yeah this it was a guy who turned up at our helicopter lunch party oh in that's La- the guy in adelaide and the, the guy that came the guy that joined the party his late, name was doug yeah he sat down and he went yeah this is all right there's a area over there is a bunch of ferals yeah, he had a story about yeah. David Attenborough. Yeah. At one time, David Attenborough was sitting here, and a bunch of ferals were sending their mother's ashes out to sea on a right. balloon, and in someone balloon. swam out to get it, and all the ferals ran down. I'm going, I was fucking dying at the fact that he was calling just... And we've, I've met ferals. When I where I saw you, Alex. I'm with Alex, our tour manager, and his uh, the, the bag. We'll get to the bag, <laughs> Mimi, and Brian Hennigan. This is basically a, a wrap up of the tour. Even though we have a couple more shows, all downhill, all downhill in a good for way. the audiences. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I encountered the word feral in this in this. Uh, circumstance i.e. like australia i uh, don't know if you remember this but in mad max 2 the road warrior mm. there was a small child who was like his buddy and in the credits he was the feral kid <laughs> <laughs> ferals are serious where i was out smoking where i met you i went b- uh, back out to smoke and i asked this just just filthy like gym shorts like yeah, you know, workout shorts, tattoos, bikey kind of fuck. I go, hey, can I, uh, can I use your lighter? And he went, Aah! like I was a fucking dick. Like I, this was like, like I was stepping on his fucking toes in a bar. And he just hands me a lighter, and I use it, and I go, thank you very much. And he went, Aah! like fuck you. How dare you ask me for fire? <laughs> <laughs> Ferals are thick here. That's it, and that's the lighter is yeah. 
Yeah, he's like, I only have yeah. so many fucking lights. In That's this. It. The thing I like about the ferals is that I I've seen it twice here. There's somebody, there's a, a feral or a bogan at the airport who's flying for the first time and they have that brilliant, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, but I don't mind if I make an ass of myself doing it. So they just walk up to the front of the security and say, how did you get through this? You know, <laughs> I, I saw someone doing that and they, they were clearly just had never flown before and just were just going around to, just asking people really obvious questions because they didn't give a shit. <laughs> I like it's that. A, it is a shameless sort it's of for, yeah, it's a very shameless. I'm not going to worry about mm. what we've already said, but flying in Australia is fucking brilliant. You don't need ID. They just ask you for your boarding pass. You could be anyone as long as yeah. you have a boarding pass. You could be like like they have uh, uh, feral kids, let's say. In the States, when you go to a horse track and they have all the, the, the people that bring their children to a horse track, they'll go and they'll just pick up every ticket off the floor and have them scan it to in case someone oh. accidentally threw away a winning ticket. Uh, what are they called? Poor people. Poor people. <laughs> right, okay, there's no... Universal. Well, Mexicans, if you're in the Southern California region, mm -hmm. it's usually Mexican kids. <laughs> Forget my point. <laughs> I used to take glass bottles back to get the deposit. That was pretty much, much... Oh, yeah, yeah, it was a huge thing yeah. in Massachusetts. Yeah. <laughs> yep. N nickel deposit on yeah. a can. Got people picking up cans. Worked it well. Yeah created jobs <laughs> well that's what again that's why i never thought my dad being an alcoholic was a bad thing because i used to always get the deposit money i used to always, i used to think the more my dad drank the better <laughs> i think they were trying to do that with crows at one point crows teach crows to pick up garbage in exchange for bird feed i think that was in the states what yeah like <laughs> birds i know what a bird is <laughs> do, you, do you not have crows a raven sorry <laughs> Doug, do you have anything else? No, no, no. no, no, no the point was, you could just go around yeah. picking up boarding passes, boarding passes off the ground, and try to fly somewhere the same way you're trying to find a winning horse track ticket. Yeah, and you can take fucking alcohol and li liquids through the scanners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I brought a full bottle of Bailey's. We fucking canned a bottle of Bailey's. The one thing about the airlines here. Virgin Australia, I tweeted this, hey Delta, instead of calling them uh, airline partners, call them step partners, because they act like they love you as much as your actual mother, but they don't. They don't want you to be drunk on airlines here. The Sky Clubs That's true. Yeah. don't start serving until 11 a.m., even though the bar's outside in the, if you want to pay you're fucking $16 for a pint. Yeah, you could go out there, but they won't serve you in the Sky Club. And unlike American Sky Clubs, there's no alcohol. Yeah. Booze. Just, yeah, liquor. there's cider, beer, and wine. Yeah. There's no liquor. Fucking half the Sky Clubs in America are free pour. They have the five basics tequila, whiskey, Jeez. rum, vodka. Sure, but bear in mind the airlines won't be able to buy those at the same price as the American airlines. Therefore, the, the fucking deficit for them could be enormous. Mm. And their food is shit. I mean, you you can find something to eat, but yeah. The, I used to think Virgin was like perfect. In fact, I've tweeted that where, hey, I'm a Delta loyalist, but if Virgin ever flew to Tucson, I would jump ship immediately. Well, Virgin America is better than Delta. Virgin Australia is fucking dated. Yeah, but I'm just saying that, you know, compared to, if you want to compare, you have to compare apples and apples. And yeah, and Virgin America is better than Delta. Last two of you were pretty stoked on Virgin Australia. Yeah. The food wise, they seem to have. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's not bad. Well, the First of all, well, the oh, fact we got food today on a three hour flight in economy, that yes. doesn't happen anymore. No, that yeah. doesn't happen. Yeah. And it wasn't that bad. No, it wasn't. The fucking... We're at the, uh... Some hotel... Yeah, you, you'd shut that, but... Now Chaley's gonna want room tone, and you're gonna fuck it up by shutting that. 
Yeah, Chili says you have to get. <laughs> no, 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 no. Alex. Shut, shut that. That is kind of annoying. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're in a very nice hotel. And uh, what the fuck are you spending all this money on? Who are you talking to? You. Oh. After the Asia tour, where they put us up in all these five star hotels. Well, these are much cheaper. The fucking bill for the two nights in Perth. This or stuff? Perth. Was seven hundred dollars for I know, but the, two the, nights. The, the, the availability when we were for that that those days was somewhat odd. We could I couldn't get in the Sheraton even. Yeah, you tried to pull this shit on me once before, and I then I got you. then I spent when I jumped ship in Sydney. Like I'm not staying in this fucking place. This place had great. the most amazing <laughs> view. <laughs> I but know. it was on the top of a fucking... I know, but how could you object to that? You saw it, you two. To be fair, yeah, that meant I got the upgrade. <laughs> yeah, you get to stay there. But I got there, and there's like, there's nothing. There weren't plates in the fucking place. Oh, there were. I, it was I, an Airbnb were. with the most amazing view. It was and the most amazing view. once you look at it, you go, I could get a postcard and look at this at a fucking cheap motel that's ah, next you to... Could all, you could also smoke on it. You could smoke on that enormous balcony. Yeah, I had a tiny balcony I could smoke on at the place. I went... I spent 117 bucks a night to be right beside the venue of the first night and two miles down the road from the other venue where I had a supermarket, sushi, a liquor store, all within, you know, 30 yards of me. I'm, you're welcome to book the, all the accommodation from now on. <laughs> I mean, that's up to you. But, like, you're not like a fancy posh cunt. I mean, I make fun of you for being a, a posh lad. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I tend to go with whatever I think is appropriate for uh, the circumstances. And the circumstances is a nebulous thing that I assess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where to kick this fucking thing off. I right, mean, go on, then. ball busting you is going to start it, but we could go. Uh, what were the emails? Oh, I got to get the emails. We'll do that at the break at the twenty minute mark. I'll pull those up. Do we go with Tom Ballard or do we go? Well, with... We hit Bogan. Why don't we hit Dave Hughes? Oh, Dave Hughes. Well, that kind of goes with Tom Ballard. Yeah, yeah do that. Well, yeah, it's kind of. That's well, I, I still want to. I can't wait to fucking pound on you. <laughs> Brian Hennigan got thrown out of a venue. Let's just <laughs> let's just tease that. Relax. Tease I'm, it. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not in defending territory yet. <laughs> then that's yeah. Get get some cocktails. We're all gonna need them. So the uh, first day I met you. In 2014, um, we were doing uh, Brisbane Radio that day, ABC, which is a sort of like our... Um, ABC? Uh, no, more like your PBS. Oh, yeah, NPR. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, and uh, so they rang me up a couple of hours before it, and they were like, oh, we've got this, uh, we've got Dave Hughes in the building, so... Uh, Oh, we thought it'd be great if he could sort of come in and teach Doug the rules of AFL. Now, this is a radio show that I have to do to promote yeah, my Yeah, to promote gig. the gig that and night they or the next say night. This yeah. Dave Hughes, that was their angle. Yeah, He's teach yeah. Teach me about Australian football. Yeah, so we run it by you. You think it's Steve Hughes. <laughs> Who is a fucking hilarious comic. I heard he's tits up off the rails. So I sort of just giggled to myself. Like, All right, this is going to sort of work out well. Um, and, <laughs> and we get to the... Uh, well, to start off, you were already doing press that day. Uh, a few different magazines. And you were hammered by the time I met you. Um, I remember running off and grabbing you a Subway sub uh, to sort of sober you up before we went across to get... Uh, Subway to- always sobers you up. <laughs> no, cocaine does. Have you, <laughs> have you seen that movie? Is it flight? <laughs> yeah. They, uh, I remember being drunk, waiting to go on. And uh, I could. I, I had a sense of what was about to happen because I'd looked up Dave Hughes and I'd, I'd realized he had 400,000 Twitter followers in a country which ha- no, where no one uses Twitter, yeah. which basically means... Every single person in Australia follows him. Yeah. Mm. And if you're that popular comedian in any 
with that sort of ratio of attraction in, in on social media in your native country, that means you're like the national comedian of that country, i.e. you reflect the national values of the people of that country and nowhere else. You That guy does not travel to do comedy. Oh, no. <laughs> not that you know, I've heard of. He is the... He, 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 there was no threat of him taking over Jon Stewart's <laughs> role on The Daily Show. Yeah. Like Trevor Noah. Yes. No, he's he's staying local. Yeah. And therefore, that was part of the issue was you had no idea who he was. And he knows he's the biggest comedian in Australia. Mm. Well, uh, 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 I've repeated the story probably wrong on that Tom Ballard show where when you a lot of these stories listeners sitting there at your hump job whiling away the hours listening to podcasts you have to understand uh, I don't remember any of these stories I'm repeating these stories third hand from whatever you have notes in front of you from what happened four years ago but you told me while I was drunk that I showed up, I remember, th I thought he was going to be the other guest on this radio show. I didn't know he's the comedian. You tell me he's a comedian. Is this wrong? Well, they sort That's of... That's right. That's right. Yeah, they brought him in as a, sort of like a, a special event. Like, oh, we've got a big US comedian. We'll bring because in Because that female comedian. couldn't make it. The, the regular host, yeah, the host, of, the host of the show was a, 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 some lady that's not there. Yeah. So... Uh, I assume this Dave Hughes that you said, well, he's he's basically a, a Belgian comedian. Well, that's what I told you when you said, oh, Steve Hughes. I'm like, oh, no, no, Dave Hughes. And you're like, oh, who's that? I'm like, oh, Bogan comedian. That's the first time you'd ever. And I'd never heard the expression no. Bogan, which, again, white trash. Like yeah. Larry the Cable Guy or... Probably more of a, uh, what's not the Foxworthy, uh, Bill Redneck. Ingvall. All right. Larry the Cable Guy is a character. Correct. Bill Ingvall <laughs> is actually yeah. that guy. Yeah, he's got an excuse. Um, yeah, Dave. So, yeah, so, yeah. So, I tell you, yeah, no, he's a Bogan comedian. And um, you walk into the studio. He's not there yet. And uh, the producers are all there. This is where it crosses into the sort of the Tom Ballard podcast. And, um, yeah, you go to them, oh, Dave Hughes, I, I hear he's a Bogan comedian. And they just sort of go quiet and they go, oh, well, you can ask him that. Yeah. And, uh, and so then you just start ripping on the fact that, yeah, the host of the show isn't actually at her show. She's stuck in traffic. Starts off pretty tame. And then it sort of escalates to, oh, she's getting a back alley abortion. On that Ferris wheel. On a, well, there's a then, big Ferris wheel outside of the studio. Well, so. we had pointed out that, yeah, the, the, the Brisbane wheel, I think it's called, uh, this big Ferris wheel. There's a, It's kind of like the one in London. It's I always know, yeah, outside where we stay yeah. in Leicester Square. There's some fucking, at, at that apart hotel, there's always that giant Ferris wheel. But there's a VIP booth in it where you can't see whoever's where in it from the waist down. Where you can get back alley abortions. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, and uh, and so I can't remember when he came in, or, or uh, but basically he came in and, and tried to teach you the rules of AFL and you just were not interested at all. I just kept bringing up the yeah, back alley abortion that it. the regular host yeah. that he's filling in for is getting on that Ferris wheel. He's probably the equivalent of Lakshmi Singh or whoever from PBS. <laughs> yeah. you know? And instead of running with it, I no. Do. He just keeps on going back to fucking AFL. Um, yeah, so it, I think we were, I, we were supposed to be there for an hour and it got cut down to about 45 minutes. Or less, probably. Yeah, yeah. I, there's, and Hennigan's been there for plenty of these in the UK, so I'm probably transposing different, you know, vague memories where we were supposed to do three segments, but it's one, and I get worst, shoot yeah, off the because was BB, I, BBC Six, which lasted all of five minutes for what should have been a thirty-minute appearance, <laughs> literally. And, like, thanks, Doug, and gone. But evidently, I just wouldn't let the back alley Ferris wheel abortion thing go, and I just kept hammering it because I, I like I I know that I don't belong on these shows, and well, this is the biggest 
radio show. It was the drive time radio slot for the biggest radio show in that city. Um, yeah. <laughs> and that's going to draw nobody. Either I do back alley abortion and bang it into the ground. Nobody that would want to see my show is listening to the biggest radio show, NPR. That's why I, I'll, I'll never be promoted on HuffPo or like there's a lot of places that my audience just doesn't live. And if they did happen to hear me, it would be an accident or I could do like just some homegrown, homespun humor, like how much I hate the how you going phrase that everyone <laughs> says here. Yeah, I could do that joke. And they go, oh, he knows something about our culture. Let's go see him live. And then they get to fucking Indian gang rape and go, ah, you got to get out of here. <laughs> and you're back to walkouts. Yeah. Yeah. You're inviting walkouts or you're getting walked out of the studio one way or the <laughs> other. So, so Dave views that comes up. Tom Ballard. Last time you listened to me and Brian Hennigan, we was lounging around a little bit drunk on a balcony in Melbourne, kind of like tonight when this tour started. And uh, shortly after that, I was checking my Twitter and I saw this from at tonightly haven't we covered this no we haven't covered this oh. we did the dumb dumb show oh wait we all right we talked about how i was or was not going to do it on yeah. the dumb dumb yeah. show and that podcast has yeah gone out. that is already aired by the time they hear this so i go and i do that show yeah uh, all right it's not bad like I had just seen the montage trailer that looked Benny Hillish. Now it's kind of like a daily show, and it's not a bad show at all. And Tom Ballard, fine gentleman, great staff, it was a, uh, and they, they, they knew their shit. That wasn't like a bad, you know, like radio segment. Where do you get your ideas from? What can the audience expect no, from they, you? They, no, they did a very good job. Very good job. Mm. Night before, I do Tom Ballard. Some all right. All right well, let's Might tease be it. Are we at the twenty-minute mark? Yep. All right, we have to pause to do some commercial breaks, and I need to smoke a half a cigarette, and I'll be back with uh, Tom Ballard and the sketchy, twitchy kid from the night before. And this is where it gets fun. This is the stuff. I probably would have let go if they hadn't uh, edited it out of the Tom Ballard Tonightly Show. Please hold. <laughs> Great news, kids. The much-neglected merch page on my much-neglected website has been taken over by Greg Chaley. So we have uh, tour t-shirts, podcast t-shirts. We have Papa Vodka Presents t-shirts. Get them before we get sued, before we get the cease and desist. And a whole shitload of uh, CDs and DVDs that span a lifetime. A sad, tragic, bloated lifetime of my fucking horrible thoughts and pontifications. Uh, so help me get that shit out of my crawl space. Thanks for that. And now, back to the podcast previously recorded. Not even gonna try to do this in alphabetical order <laughs> chronologically, but let's get back to the kid. Adelaide. Tom Ballard. Adelaide. If you if you heard the last podcast, if you didn't, I got a tweet that I have to do a TV show that Brian Hennigan doesn't tell me about. It doesn't look like anything. It was like nine out of ten cats. I had no business being on that fucking show talking about uh, pop culture in the UK, which I don't know pop culture or the UK, and then I'm sitting there on a fucking panel. This That's is what fucking I'm 2007 or something. I'm saying it was like that where I thought <laughs> I and so I'm tweeting them. Nah, I'm not doing this fucking show. 
I'm too ugly. I don't want to see my face on TV. Everything I hate about TV. Sure, but haven't we covered this on the Dumb yeah, Dumb I'm just, All right, okay. in case you didn't hear that podcast, now you're caught up to date. So then I agree to do the show the next day because Brian Hennigan goes, you know, I have to call the people to reassure them that you will be doing the show. And in my hungover, defeated state, I go, all right. Yes, Dad, I'll do the show. Night before, whatever the show was before, this sketchy little kid, and sketchy meaning a quivery, nervous. Waiting outside the back of the venue from way early. For the Bisbee people, he looked like Russian butters. <laughs> He's this quivery little kid, and he, he crawled backstage. To- in Adelaide. In Adelaide. Mm-hmm. Came backstage. Snuck his way back, Pushed and he went, ha, 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 "Hey, uh, 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 I'm a comedian." And I went, "Okay, hi." And he's he just went into this nervous story. He said he had heard uh, or saw the tweets. He goes, "You're doing the show uh, uh, tonightly. Tonightly, uh, I have a Me Too story about the host." Tom Ballard, I was me tooed by him. And I go, really? And you have to understand, when I get off stage, when you get off stage, it's like when you just come out of a fist fight. Like, you, I don't know what just happened. You're in a state. You're, you know, you're just coming off stage, and you're in, in a, a peaked state of adrenaline. And uh, I ask him his story, and, and then he starts telling me how... Tom Ballard brought him back to his... He opened for Tom Ballard or he was at a a comedy club something where Tom Ballard was there and Tom brought him back to his hotel room and then then he got vague and I go, all right, listen, uh, if I'm going to bring this up on the Tonightly show, I'm going to grill you like, uh, you know, a hideous uh, Louisiana prosecutor would grill. You were asking for it by the way you're dressed. All right, exactly what happened? How, did you lead him on in any way? <laughs> I go, I'm sorry to do this, but I want to know the fucking true story. And he kept saying, I remember he kept saying, I've, I, I'd only had sex with two people at that point. How old were you? I was 20. At the time, he's 23 now, it was years ago, and, well, what happened? Did you, the people you've slept with, were they men or women? Were like, are you gay? Because is Tom Ballard openly gay, which he is? So, all right, you go back to the hotel room of an openly gay comic who's only, I think, he's only like four years older than the kid. But had been on the biggest sort of morning radio show in the country. Yeah, he does have, and this is where all that Me Too shit gets weird, where, well, he used his power. Well, that's why a guy achieves power, (laughs) is to get pussy. And when pussy's no longer good, he just wants more power. You think Donald Trump is pounding his wife right now? No, now it's just power. That's all he has. Point being, the kid told me a story, and I thought, you know, drunk after a show, maybe maybe it would be funny to call this guy out as being me too Uh and he, he told me his whole story. And his story was basically Tom Ballard brought him to his hotel, put on a movie, not porn, just a regular movie, and then uh, uh, touched his penis and then performed oral sex on him. And then the kid left. And I so I was I, like, I hate to <laughs> grill you like this. I I believe you, but I did, like did wait, you wait? Did you believe him? Yes, I did. Why? Well, I, I sent him to you. We'll get to that. I believed him, but I didn't weigh the morality of it. You know, I was just all right. 
did uh, what at any point did you say no if you're uh, if you know the history if you know the story of when bingo got soft raped in Bisbee from our mushroom dealer, some old man. Is that the trombone guy? It was the, the guy, the <laughs> apple orchard guy. Oh, I don't oh. want to get into details. All He's right. probably dead by now. But oh. yeah, she got soft raped, which was a, a it was a term that Chaley coined, which had no meaning until Bingo had that happen to her. I go, see, that's what a soft rape is. She just couldn't say no. She froze up. She got into a position where I don't want to fucking retell this story, but she got into a position where, oh, uh, you're a massage therapist. I used to do massage therapy. Oh, you'll give me a massage. And when he grabbed her by the clam all alone in a fucking apple orchard, she just froze and couldn't say no. And I had already I was the guy that set it up. Where I told this 70 year old man, oh, bingo, back when she was just coming out of hard insanity and actually able to speak socially on any level, she loved this old guy. He was this weird old, he looked, the the old guy from The Simpsons with the beard, the white beard, looking out the window. That's a paddling. (laughs) That guy. (laughs) He looked like that. So he. I said, oh, Bingo loves you. She can't stop talking about you. And then we go out to buy mushrooms, and he's like, he invites her to a drum circle. Where, <laughs> where, where is this? I don't want to get into details. All it's right. outside of Bisbee. All right. A, I don't know if the guy's still alive and uh, small details. Okay. Point being, she goes out there her first time to go out with someone socially alone by herself. Mm -hmm. And then they get into the, oh, I was a massage therapist. Oh, I'm a massage. So he starts giving her a massage, grabs her by the clam. Mm -hmm. She freezes up. And then he fingers her. (laughs) Made her come, which I have never done. (laughs) This is that was the fucking heart stabber. (laughs) And wow. then finally, when he gets up, he's going to try to mount her. She goes, I have to go. I have to be at a barbecue. She finally bails on the situation, runs in. This is before the fence days. This oh, is like wow. 2006. Wow. Or late 2005, oh. even. And then she runs in, like crying, won't talk for a while. And then she comes out and tells us what happens. Mm-hmm. And. It's probably Joby at that point. Someone's like, oh, we should kick his ass. I'm like, no, I told this guy, Bingo loves you. Ooh. This is an old man that lives alone in the fucking middle of the desert in his fucking apple orchard. He probably thought I was trying to set them up. She Ooh. never said no. She like, yeah, I'll get naked for a massage. He probably thinks that this is. Like, okay, yeah, she, there. Are you basically saying Tom Ballard is an old man with an apple orchard, and <laughs> this young kid was unwilling to not? I'm saying I had to defend a guy that just soft raped my wife because there was no. Like, he believed it was okay, and she wasn't. She just froze up. He's not gonna. Go, oh, she's not saying no, so it must be fine. And he's delusional and he sells mushrooms. He probably thinks, oh, I'm like the scar face of the fucking Elfrida apple orchard. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. He, he's was, also, I don't, don't there was no. no malicious intent. And I had to defend her rapist where she did too <laughs> other people like let's go kick his ass i go he's an old feeble man that i said oh bingo loves you so much and he probably thought the first time we went out there to buy mushrooms he was talking about yeah i had this girl and uh she then she went away to wherever and it's been three months and i don't i don't know if she's coming back <laughs> like completely delusional so <laughs> well, Point being, yeah. Also, 
he he grows apples in fucking Arizona. That's, he's used to overcoming un, unsurmountable odds. I mean, that's fairly impressive. <laughs> if, he, if he's fucking making a living in that way, yeah. It's no, similar to Australian selling mushrooms with okay. probably so he, crab apples so the, the, dead on so a tree. So the apples are a front. Okay. <laughs> Keep Anyways, going. The, the point is, I I I. I I look at both sides of the story, I think is my point. I am very unbiased when I pass judgments. So when I grilled this kid, his story did not hold up. You are just like any kid that, yeah, I, I, I didn't say no. He, he left the same way. He never said no. He left on friendly terms, but he came to me at using the hashtag me too about Tom Ballard. Mm -hmm. And when I grilled him about it, his fucking story. Yeah. This guy might hold power in his world, but yeah, you let the guy blow you. This sure. guy thinks, Hey, I'm on TV now. I, I, you, 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 you think you're straight, but uh, just wait till I suck your dick. Okay, right. So, do you think there is an issue here, which is on the basis of a five-minute conversation, ten-minute conversation after a gig, when you're wired, and this kid just comes up and does all this, you're basically putting Tom Ballard in a situation. Am I putting yeah. him in a situation? Yeah. How so? We don't have to discuss this. Oh, I could have just blown it off, but it, my first instinct, which would be yours, is, hey, this could be really funny on this show that I don't want to do anyway, to bring up, <laughs> like, if this guy fucking raped this kid, uh, that would be hilarious. At this point, I don't know Tom Ballard. <laughs> All I know is it's a show I don't want to do that you've set up without uh, consulting me. So, yeah, in my head, I'm like, oh, that could be funny. And as that's why I grilled him. And then as his story progressed, does Tom Ballard know that you and he was already doing bits? He's a, a, a an Australian comedian, the kid, and he's already doing bits about it. And he told me some of the bits he does that were kind of funny. And at the end, I just told him, listen, just keep doing the bits. Did he make you come? He goes, no. I go, then out him for that. He's already openly gay. So just shit on him on stage for being bad at being queer. We just fucking pound on him for that because the story just didn't hold up. It's I've there's a million people. If that is a me too story, there's a fucking million women that probably fucked me only because I was on stage I, I, oh, I, 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 I passed you a note in the airplane today to, to put out that old Sarah bit that you love. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Bimbles. Yes. Uh, exactly about, yeah, just because you stand this much taller than other people and talk into a microphone, just being on stage gets you pussy that you wouldn't get otherwise and you probably don't deserve. And I do an entire expose of why you don't want to take advantage of that where yeah you could fuck someone that's well out of your weight class because you're on stage but it doesn't mean that the next day they're not going to find it as repulsive as if they just fucked you off the street and i think it's a perfect me too example <laughs> of why you don't tom ballard a kid yeah, well, he didn't say no. Yeah, he was he was scared, and he probably wanted a story. <laughs> well, that's it. That's the feeling I got. He just felt like one of those many fans who, when they meet you, panic and try and tell you the most interesting and most what they think relevant thing to you as possible, and they just blurted out all panicked, like. And he was panicked. I sent him to, I go, listen, this is a funny idea to bring up on the Tom Ballard thing, which I do. We'll get to that. But first, I sent him to Hennigan. I go, go tell Hennigan your story because I'm, you know, right off stage. I'm drunk. Hennigan will not have a sense of humor about it. 
but he'll be a a, a, a a ballast. Is that a right word? He'll be a fucking. You'll give it some kind of. Yeah, but I mean, in the moment, all you can do in any situation like that is assess the person. You don't. You're not listening to their story. You're listening to the person. Right. You're. You're. Thinking, and I was not. That's you know, why I sent them to you. Yeah. For and, the and yeah, and, that, and again, it's a very it's a very uh, substantial accusation you're making about someone, and and therefore to that I, I, you'd have to have. I think it would be it's correct to go into that, presuming the person you're talking to may not be right. That uh, I listen to the story with every hope that this kid had been violently raped just so I could make a big production about it. And I, doubting myself, grilled him to the point where I'm like, this doesn't sound like anything other than, oh, I let a guy blow me. I, I, I Actually, before we left that night, I told the kid, listen, I used Andy Andrist as an example. I used me getting blown by a transvestite hooker in my youth in my open mic days. I go, I made a bit out of it. I just owned it. Like that transvestite hooker didn't go, I'm really a woman. <laughs> just, just let me uh, yeah, yeah. hope to believe. Yeah, I had my dick in the mouth of a fucking angry man who wasn't even famous. Mm. <laughs> But again, again, the kid is is thinking of this story. Again, when did it happen? We're talking about was it was three it, years before, right, right? And he's bringing it is coming up because of the current climate. Oh, that's that his before. in to talk to me, hmm. and it's before and he got the show as well. Well, but you said but, yeah, but, that's but, that's well, important. But you yeah. also said this. Yeah, before, I got sued when I got the Man Show from some shit I'd written on my website when I was completely nobody. Now I'm a little less of a nobody, and maybe there's money here. So I got sued for defamation. And this kid, oh no, nah, that guy me tooed me. He sucked my dick. <laughs> You didn't suck his dick. Like, maybe <laughs> that would even give you a little bit more. He made me suck his dick. No, you got blown. You just laid okay, back and watched I think the fucking you, Pixar like, movie. I, I think there's an important point from when you talk about this on the actual show, because you did bring it up with Tom. You brought it up. Okay, so I get uh, we, we get to uh, Sydney, was Sydney? it? And I do the show. It's a really funny show. Mm -hmm. It's some uh, you know, great people, great beats. I laughed. Yeah. Then I get on, and then uh, the Me Too came up vaguely, and I said, "Have you been Me Tooed?" And I go, "Because you were the other night by this kid." And Tom Ballard went, "Oh, oh, 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 you can see that on the uh, if you if you watch a, a repeat of that show. Oh no, you won't see it because they edited it out. <laughs> right. Okay. This is where I say. They didn't edit it out entirely. If you mm. were trying to crush that moment, they could have edited it out far better. They did not crush it entirely. Not when it first aired. Yeah. But I even saw... Well, so there's, uh, there, there is uh, some fan that was in the audience. They actually yelled that out. Well... I said, uh, yeah, I said something uh, where uh, they'll probably edit this out Unless uh, you're recording it and someone said, I am, something to that right. effect. Anyway, yeah. Point being, I was on Tom Ballard's side. There was no need to edit it out. And I talked to Tom Ballard afterwards, who is a genuinely nice guy. And after the show, because I brought up the, yeah, you got me too, and then scuttle button and, and skip this move past it afterwards he said yeah uh i heard that that guys you know talking about this and i honestly i as far as i'm concerned it was a consensual thing and i go yeah well he goes i'm willing to talk to the kid 
I I feel you know devastated that he thought it was anything otherwise. And I I was gonna say there's no one in this room who hasn't been in that position. But I realize I'm talking to Alex and Hennigan, who probably got laid five times in your life combined. <laughs> I've totally been me too. But I'm saying where you go, it's just someone that could claim buyer's remorse. Like, <laughs> uh, I, I went back to the hotel. I didn't know what else to do because, you know, he just sang karaoke real well. And everyone clapped, and I thought I, I better submit to his will and desire without voicing any opinion against. Yeah, I have uh, uh, me too. I have me too to more than Tom Ballard has. If that's the case, where someone didn't say no till three years later, <laughs> and you go, ah, I'm fucking, I'm a middle act now. Look, I'm getting pussy. I say. I didn't, I thought because I was there, I should just fuck you. Well, I don't know that. I think I'm a star. So, so yes, I was on Tom Ballard's side, and I'm only bringing this up because I brought it up on his show and he edited it out, you fucking asshole. Well, he didn't edit it out entirely. All right. He didn't. Still, it's a funny story. It's It's a funny story. It's an interesting story. I mean, I just think... The, yeah, the uh, there's something about just going around slinging dirt like that that it's I don't think it's well. Then I talked to the kid. Hey, Tom Ballard, if you're listening, I talked to the kid afterwards. I got his. I fuck. I feel me too. That I gave that kid my phone number that night. <laughs> <laughs> like that you, was an odd moment. You were I'm actually not. there going. Why did you give him your number? He asked for your n phone number. I said, just tweet me and or yeah. email me your stuff. He goes, well, could I get your cell phone? And I just, I went, I'm going to hate myself for doing this. Yes, just take it down. But yeah, he tweeted me and I tweeted him back that Tom Ballard said, hey, I'm happy to talk this out with the kid. And uh, well, again, I shouldn't keep saying kid. Yeah, but also, again, on a very apart. simple basis. If you've been assaulted, call the police. Hmm. Yeah. He, he never even said I was assaulted. He was me too It was like a power thing. Right. That's, a, that's how people get fucking laid. <laughs> if you're not rich or handsome, you use whatever you know, status you have, and it worked. It worked. So why don't you just keep making jokes about Tom Ballard couldn't make you come with a blowjob <laughs> and then add, I don't think any any woman is even good enough to make me come with a blowjob. And then you're going to get a bunch of stupid <laughs> chicks. You go, oh, you think I can't make you come with a blowjob? I'll make you come with a blowjob. And then you picture Tom Ballard. <laughs> so anyway, the point being. Uh, yeah, Tom Ballard is, if I insinuated, he's a Me Too. Yeah, he's he's Me Tooed on the wrong end of the spectrum. He didn't do anything. That kid needs to just keep fucking working his act. And stop letting guys blow you just to be in a fucking hotel room. Go to a youth hostel. Get better stories. Yeah. Oh. Okay. All right. I guess we're going to take another break. Yeah. That was the fucking Tom Ballard. Uh, that that was the weird thing. I Because I don't know what he, when he was telling me the story, he kept repeating. And I've only had sex twice in my life. Like that means <laughs> I, you're, you're a dude and you're 20. It doesn't matter uh -huh. how many times. If you said, you know what, it's my own fault because I've fucked over 40 women. Right. I only had sex twice, though. Like, he was desperately trying to get an angle mm -hmm. as to why he's a victim. 
Only had sex twice, so I wouldn't know better than to let this guy bring me to a hotel and put on a fucking Disney movie and suck my cock. Was that a Disney movie? The Disney movie was my story. He actually, <laughs> oh, he, he actually told me what movie it was. It was like I go, was it porn? He goes, no, it was Finding so, Nemo. It's I, 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 I'm. I'm probably wrong, but it seemed like it was a Pixar kind of movie. Oh, that was my Nemo. story. Oh. Up. Well. <laughs> and it was in the first scene of Up, which is extra fucked. First scene of what? Up. Oh, yeah. The one where... Uh, I know the first scene. The, yeah. That, that amazing um, tracking shot. Yeah. yeah. yeah well. Dave Hughes, by the way, yeah. after that, uh, that came up on Tom Ballard's show. Yes. Uh and I, by the way, I, I hung out with the, the staff of the Tom Ballard Tonightly show afterwards at that fucking weird bar that we had done a thing at last time we were on tour. Oh, it's yeah. connected the, to a the, casino. Yeah, executive sports bar or something. Some weird yeah. place. And they were the fucking greatest guys to hang out with. Uh, and thank you for uh, hanging with me. They showed up at that hotel I was at and then brought me to that cool bar yeah they all came back to the hotel like you like yeah you, know, you said hey we're gonna hang out at the hotel and they all turned i up go and... i'm gonna go grab some sushi real quick yeah. i'll be right back i went the sushi sucked i ate one plate off a train and then fucking that's bailed. A big, by the way that's a big question for australia why does your fucking sushi suck so much you have Except you're for you're a fucking place. ocean based you know country and your sushi is fucking shit <laughs> It really is. I mean, apart from the fucking Kai Ten sushi that we discovered in Melbourne, at the bottom. If you go, if you're, if you, if you, you know, you know, navigate yourself to the Sheraton Hotel in Melbourne and go two door, two or three doors down. There's a Kai Ten, which means rotating Kai Ten sushi place, and it's fantastic. Sushi train, sushi train, sushi. Almost Shusha. every other Australian sushi outlet is fucking awful. I mean grotesquely insulting the that, concept of sushi the one uh, yesterday in perth right next door it says sushi bar it's not a bar yeah, it's a fucking there's no kiosk. fucking bar it's a kiosk of it's like supermarket sushi it's bus station sushi it's a vending machine of yeah. sushi they're not making it in front of your face all right th that's enough dave views i was going to get back to that he responded on twitter he was, a good, he was a good bloke. Yes, he's a good bloke. Mm. And I don't know if he's bogan or feral, but he's a nice guy. He's a good bloke. You don't know me. I don't know you. Yeah. Sorry about the, uh, the Ferris wheel abortion jokes. Uh, what, what time are we at? Do you have a time? Uh, maybe. F yeah, but, anywhere between 40 to an well, hour. Chitty can put yeah. another advert here, can't well, he? Well, we can, we can make this a long one. Let's take another break. Yeah, All great. right, there's one more break because I got fucking beats here. We get the fucking helicopter ride. We got we Alex got, dragging got... the bag. Oh wait, and we get the Hannigan ejection. Uh, Jesus. Although yeah, we're gonna on, have to let's go straight on the to day Hannigan Hughes ejection. Thing, that first encounter where the two of you are actually in the same room. When you went back to the green room where Hannigan and I were, you said, "I got a feeling he's in there telling them to cut that." And sure enough, they cut it from any replay. They didn't put it up on the podcast. But, I don't know. I retweet what they post. I don't want to listen to me. If they cut all of me out of my entire interview. Here's an interview with Doug Stanhope with no Doug Stanhope. I would be happy. Where if it's just that guy, Tom talking and then they cut out my responses i'm glad <laughs> because i don't want to hear my fucking voice it's hideous all right we'll be back that's enough of tom ballard tom ballard doesn't fuck kids unless they're adults and they don't know better the shady dell.com that is where you stay. If you come to Bisbee and you're staying at the Shady Dell and I'm in town, I will have a beer with you. I won't hang out that long. We're not going to be good friends. I don't want you to fucking tell me you're going to kill yourself. But if you're staying at the ShadyDell.com, vintage trailer park with all 50s, 60s trailers that we live a mile away from and we look for reasons to go stay there, come to the ShadyDell.com. 
sponsored by. I might even come in and uh, clean your toilet. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Hit record. It's recording. It is recording. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Alex drags the bag. Let's give you a little insight on Alex. <laughs> Alex, I don't know how you found Alex for our last tour of Australia. He Mate. Wrote, he wrote in. Keep going. He wrote in. <laughs> <laughs> Long time listener, yeah, first time like, emailer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I can do it. But it was a good email. So keep going. Yeah. Yes. Well, so, I'd. I'd been no, no, not you, him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ahead. you film you. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I'd been fired from my uh, well, not fired, but suspended indefinitely from my last job, which was uh, producing a big sort of stage show, like a pop orchestra piece of shit thing. And um, I was on this thing called uh, Nice, where basically they um, they pay you what uh, welfare would pay you. Uh, but you don't have to look for jobs. You get to start your own business. So uh, I was in the middle of that trying to do a rip-off of the thing that I'd been suspended from. And I heard on your podcast... Oh. You no, and- this, was, this thing you were suspended from wasn't <laughs> storytelling, was it? No, but then I, <laughs> I heard on your podcast uh, that you couldn't find a promoter for Australia. So I was drunk and... Um, Seemed like a good idea at the time and uh, woke up the next morning, was still a good idea, wrote to Hennigan, um, went and had a shower and uh, Hennigan called me back while I was in the shower and uh, yeah. Is it one of those things that, oh, uh, did my phone ring? <laughs> no, it was one of those things my, where like- my blow, Was that my- I, I was blow drying my hair. Did I miss your call? <laughs> you know, when you're waiting for a phone call from a girl that you just oh. met? Oh. No. I was in the shower. Did you call? <laughs> I thought I heard my phone ring. I don't Sorry. get it. Who's that? Uh, never mind. Right. Mm. So, anyway, so you- It kicked off pretty quick. You, you, you hooked up a tour, mm-hmm. which you did beautifully- in Without everyone's a hint eyes, except one. for Hennigan's, as Hennigan tends to do, he hires people and then shits on them <laughs> repeatedly. <laughs> the way Yoda shits on people. It's a job in itself. Yeah, he he, uh, he texted me something the other day, and he said, uh, uh, I, "I said, oh, do we have booze in the green room or something?" Oh. And he goes. Uh, yeah, I'm on top of it. I go, yes, of course you are, because you got trained by the best, <laughs> like an animal gets trained. <laughs> That's how Hennigan... <laughs> That's how people should work. <laughs> Hennigan <laughs> was so fucking brutal to you on that tour, and he hasn't stopped. Yeah. He's just fucking relentlessly fucking brutal to you. Although he, he always makes it up to me about an hour later. <laughs> See? <laughs> like an animal. Roll over. The important point is, I have only ever worked in premium brands or premium industries, and that is the only way to achieve things. <laughs> by brutalizing them. You're no. the king of Thailand. No, no, by, <laughs> by having standards that, are, that do not bend. That no one can live up to? <laughs> that Possibly. By the way, that's it. So Alex, after having failed his father, Brian Hennigan, (laughs) on every level on the first tour, (laughs) is rehired. Because that's what (laughs) Hennigan does. He says you're incompetent, you're worthless, you are a fuck up. Hey, we're coming back. You want to do it again? (laughs) (laughs) So this time, Alex, I'm very happy to hear Alex is here. Bingo and I love Alex. Bingo even remembers Alex. Even That's after- how much she loves him. She even remembers him. <laughs> yeah, after a traumatic brain injury. Right. She goes, my Alex? <laughs> Tell him I said hi. I love Alex. So after he You're failed right Hennigan on every level, Hennigan brings him back. Yeah, for the sequel. <laughs> yeah, because he wants to, you know, 
torture him with a wood burning kit he bought on eBay. Uh-huh. Oh, I bought this. I don't know who to burn with it. Oh, Alex, he'll take anything. <laughs> so Alex shows up. What's a, a, a Hobart, Tasmania was our first gig where Correct. Alex was there. Mm-hmm. Alex drags the bag. Oh. Alex found new love. <laughs> Mimi is. If you hear that giggle, <laughs> that giggle. <laughs> Here's my question. Mimi, if I asked you to fake a laugh, what would you do? Oh, I'd fake a laugh for you. I know, we'll do it. <laughs> it seems much the same. <laughs> <laughs> it's like your fake laugh and your real laugh. So All right. I fly I'm the... a professional faker. <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> I fly the 187 hours to get here. I don't want to fucking talk to anyone in the morning. Alex, I know. Alex has been on a tour with me. He knows I don't fucking say a word in the morning. Well, then he shows up with his new gal pal, Mimi. <laughs> and that's her real name. And Hennigan. Not yeah. my stripper name. So one of these times, the problem with me and Hennigan, and I, I've, I've found this in other relationships, with Bingo, I wrote in the book, when I'm bad cop, she plays worse cop. Mm -hmm. Like, Hennigan and I, when we're both in a shit mood, we're both real pricks. <laughs> Hennigan never goes, oh, I'll be the good guy because Stanhope's in a fucking mood. If I'm in a mood, you're in a worse mood. <laughs> and it doesn't help anyone. So that first morning where fucking Alex shows up with the fucking bag. Oh, he's got the lady and we got to get an Uber to the airport. And like, well, get a big Uber because Alex is like seven foot, 15 inches <laughs> tall. It was this fucking dangly piano fingered fucking weirdo guy. <laughs> So we're all jammed into this Uber. The older I get, the more my phobias get worse. Claustrophobia just jammed into a fucking Uber. We're in a Toyota Prius kind of fucking thing. He's in a middle seat for some reason because Hennigan feigns this. I get car sick. <laughs> really? I 35 minutes to a fucking airport, you're going to get car sick. Rather than give fucking piano fingers the front seat, I can't well, we even can talk both about finger that. his girlfriend if she's oh. in the middle in the back because she's a stripper. We find out later we didn't know we could have fingered her the whole time and he wouldn't care because that's how strippers are. Anyway, point being, yeah, both Brian and I for the first two mornings, at least me. No, I, I'm like. Is she going to be here for the whole fucking tour? I don't want to have to meet new people in the morning. And uh, that's one of those things that I try to call Junior Stopka. Because he did this to us once. On a three-week tour, he said, Oh, my girlfriend's coming to Tampa. I thought she was just coming in to visit him and leave. No, she's coming and then she's going to be in the van. And that was when we had one of those road service fucking where vans, you know, you know, five row vans where they have people, you know, where they put convicts to pick up fucking trash and orange vests on the side of the road. But still, it was Mimi. <laughs> <laughs> it was Junior Stopka and his girlfriend doing inside jokes. <laughs> Just shut the fuck up. And then it's it's them in the fucking Ubers for two mornings in a <laughs> row. Oh, we're going to have to change the uh, outgoing message on the answering machine. <laughs> <laughs> we were referencing a Norm joke, actually. Norm McDonald. You were referencing something that made you giggle <laughs> that we didn't understand and were hungover. And yes, we hated you oh, fair and enough. him for dragging the bag. We told Junior, you don't drag the fucking bag on the road. I can bring bingo, but I don't talk to her in the van. <laughs> and you once explained to me something very wise that Joe Rogan once said, which I had never thought about. Uh, it was uh, when I was first together with Renee, Rogan 
invited me to a UFC that he was announcing. And I go, okay, yeah, um, yeah, we'll be there. Should we just fly up and meet you there? And he goes, who's we? I go, me and Renee. And uh, Renee will come up later in this podcast. <laughs> he goes, wait, you're, you're, you're not bringing a chick. You can't bring a chick to this. It's not a place for a chick. Bringing a chick ruins the entire dynamic of, and it really does. It ruins the fucking <laughs> dynamic of. And I hadn't talked to Mimi at this point. I hadn't even talked to you, really. No, I hadn't seen you yet. Yeah, well, I mean, we. Yeah, well, since you were at four the gig. years ago. Yeah, you you were doing your job. Mm. Here's alcohol. That's where you talk into a mic. All right, see you tomorrow. So after a couple of days, that's where I go. That's when I called Junior. And the phone didn't go through because whatever the connection was, I was going to I put Junior on speakerphone on the way to the airport that morning and go, hey, listen, I'm with our tour manager, Alex. He brought his girlfriend on the road without notifying us. What would you tell Alex right now? <laughs> Junior go, don't drag the bag. <laughs> anyway. Then I busted her balls on stage the second night, and I tortured you for fucking dragging the bag and bringing the whole fucking tour down and ruining the dynamic. To be fair, what dynamic? (laughs) What what do you mean, to be fair? (laughs) To be fair, the dynamic that you're introducing basically a fan where if a fan came backstage, not that you're a fan. I am a fan. Point being, I don't want to have to be forced to talk to someone who's outside of our social circle. Mm. I know you. I can be silent around you. That yeah. does remind me of one text I got last tour, right before driving from Sydney to Canberra, like a minute before we got into the car from Brian, and it just simply said, silence is golden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, and I it was the that. most awkward car drive. No, it wasn't for all four for us. of it. N- n- wasn't awkward for you. <laughs> but that's the dynamic. You've heard me do that bit about gay cousin Eric. It's an old story, but how we never talk in the van. In the morning is alcoholic mm. sheepishness of just yeah. I, I, I'm going to think about stuff. I'm going to read a thing. I don't want to. And from a pure management perspective, you literally decided to bring someone on a tour without clearing it with anyone. Yeah, that's yes a, or no? That's a dick move right there. <laughs> that's yes or that's a yes or no question. I had no idea. Forgiveness or permission? <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> you don't have. What, don't quote what, Hennigan to we Hennigan. We actually brought this up. Uh, <laughs> what would you? What would? You have said. <laughs> I would have said no. And who would have been on the door? It doesn't matter. The same <laughs> person that was no on the plan. Door, the same person that was on the door last time. Listen, Brian's going to be on the shit end of a stick in a minute. But <laughs> you, you think you guys forget. You fucking work for me, you exactly. cocksuckers. If he called me and said, hey, I want to fucking drag the bag, I'd go, all right, but I'm not going to fucking talk to her. And I would have cleared that and I would have known rather than having someone I don't know show up when I really like sometimes I physically like can't look at people in the morning. Just all these fucking overpriced hotels you've been booking us in. My worst thing is they open the door for you at a five star hotel. <laughs> I go down six, eight, ten times a day to smoke. And you have us at some fucking five-star hotel in a central business district with some fucking chump-dressed fucking monkey opening the fucking door. Have a good day. (laughs) And you go, I'm just going to go outside to smoke a cigarette and then come back in six minutes. And they're, oh, back already, sir. And that's the first time. And then the third and fifth time, you just go, is there a fucking fire exit I can leave? Because this looks like a wife 
that's going, you're smoking again? <laughs> that's what it feels like. You go to breakfast in the morning and there's someone that's just staring at your plate to be finished. So they, I don't want you to watch me fucking eat. Just beat it. But we're in a very nice place where they want to take your plate away right away. Would you like more tea? Just stop watching me eat. So I forget. I went, I went on a fucking tear there. Yeah. Incidentally, uh, I can assure you there's no difference overall in the quality of the hotels from this tour to the last one. Well, I don't remember the last right. one. Right. I'm just saying that the idea that there's a bit of change in the quality is... is well, we... Not the quality. Price. But that's, that's, that's to do with your shitty dollar. <laughs> and it has to do with my lack of memory, right. which led yeah. but guides all, us right into Sydney. Sure, but the overall thing about it is, is, in terms of management, is communication of what is happening, and therefore, if when you if when you simply bring someone on a tour without telling them in advance, and it's not your tour. To be fair, you have said to me, "This is your tour." Uh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Betty could prove that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but yes, but, yes, but that is n meaning in terms of you're responsible. No one could possibly argue. That means I'm allowed to bring any personnel I allow or I feel like bringing. No one. Yeah. And I, you I, know I, that. I got to give that to Brian. Brian is right. Yeah. You, you, you're hired to not drag the bag. That's. Yeah. He thought I'd soften you both up as well. You did. <laughs> We've fallen in, I've fallen in love with Mimi. Once I found out she could take a joke, A, eh? because I did trash her on stage that night, even though she wasn't in the room. <laughs> Off getting ice, doing a job. <laughs> yeah, doing a job that I didn't know she has. <laughs> like, she goes, uh, the th like third show, she's like, I'm catching your show in bits and pieces between my work. I, wait, you're working? How can Hennigan be bitching about you and have you doing jobs unless you're delineating responsibilities to her? I don't know who the hierarchy of how you're working. <laughs> but, you know, it wasn't until, was that Canberra, Adelaide? I think it was Adelaide where... We were talking about Me Too, and you said, well, it's made my job as a stripper easier. Sydney. <laughs> Sydney. I can tell and a I, story about that right now, if you'd like. Point being, I'm like, you're a stripper? <laughs> Which made me think, you have to be the fucking worst stripper ever, <laughs> <laughs> because you giggle so much. <laughs> You're, you giggle as bad, and I'm only saying this because I know she'll listen. You giggle almost as bad as the seizure sister, Al, my neighbor, who just, <laughs> <laughs> you go, Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> like, there's nothing funny there. Why are you giggling? You're almost as bad as seizure sister, Al. <laughs> Thank you. And nobody wants that. I actually had a bit in my early years about, you know, I forget the bit, anyway, about giggling. No one wants to hear you fucking giggle when you're trying to fuck. <laughs> anyway, me too has made my job a lot easier because when I first started four years ago, uh, I had a big issue with, Guys, obviously, trying to touch my crotch and shit like that all the fucking time. And it sucks. But, yeah, since then, since Me Too, guys are so afraid of getting defamed that my job's fucking easy now. And this segues perfectly <laughs> to Brian Hennigan and our first Sydney show. How was that a perfect segue? Because <laughs> you weren't there when we play the fucking Orpheum or whatever it was. I walk in to the green room. Very accommodating. Nice lady. The manager or owner, whatever the fuck she is. She came in. I was a bit drunk. She was very drunk. And I was about to go downstairs and smoke out the back exit. And she goes, now you, 
you can smoke out here. I'm the owner of whatever she introduced herself. And I went to hug her and I went, I backed off and I said, I'm sorry, I guess you can't do that in the fucking Me Too era. I generally <laughs> hug people when I'm a little bit drunk. And she's like, oh, you hug me. How long have you been drinking? I've been drinking since 1130 in the morning. She has an Australian accent. I can't do it right now. My friend died. Our fucking best mate uh, died. We just had a memorial. And I go, was it? Oh, Mitzi Shore. It was the same day Mitzi Shore died. And she's like, fuck you. You're going to come out and drink with me afterwards. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to take you to a real bar. And we're going to get fucking drunk. And you can tell, oh, this is evil drunk. This is what we said before. Renee, my, yeah. my ex, her like that that there's a evil darkness in her eyes where she's just looking for you to either submit yeah. or be an ass yeah i wouldn't use the word term evil necessarily i'd say like malevolent or aggressive drunk like it was because evil would impl impugn her soul i'm sure she was like her soul isn't dirty or, or or bad but she was in a type of drunk that she was looking for someone to pick a fight. She was in that kind of drunk where I didn't have a great vocabulary, so I went with evil. Right, okay. <laughs> so go on. So that's how it started. Okay. I, I mean, just okay. tried to hug her. I'm segueing from fucking me, mm. too. Okay, like, here's what I like to do. I'd like Alex to explain what, he, like, the chronology of him going to the venue that day. And what he came across. Well, being as good as I am at my job, I went in the, the day before mm -hmm. when she was completely sober. Before her friend had died. Yeah. Um, took us through it, showed us the plan, entry, exit plan for Doug. All looked great. The show is going to be set up. The audio will be fine. Got people on it. Got ushers. We were happy as can be. Yeah. So, we turn up on the night um, at the arranged time. We normally get the uh, door list about two hours before the show. Mm -hmm. I go to get that printed from her. You can already see that she's drunk, had a bad day. She starts printing off um, these bookmarks yeah, she had made. Wait. Go ahead. <laughs> starts printing off bookmarks for the memorial that they had had that day rather than the door list itself. <laughs> <laughs> the memorial was like 11.30 in the morning. Yeah, it had been that day. Yeah. Um, and from then on, just a, a shit show. They, um, they couldn't get sound happening at all. Um, they couldn't get the mic to work. And this is all in a 30-minute changeover from the last picture because it's a theatre. It's a cinema. Um, and, yeah, a small lobby with... Um, yeah, while well, we're trying to all at the same time scan tickets, they're trying to also, everyone's trying to get a drink before they get in. And uh, we couldn't open the doors because they couldn't have sound. So that's pretty much. There's a, this is a, a theater very much like the Soho Theater in London, where it's like, it's almost straight up. Sure, yeah, but it was much bigger. It's like, you know, 500. Yeah, but it, 700, 700. seats. And, it was, and beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. But it it wasn't spread out and back. It was no, almost no, no, like you're no. looking up but the was, face uh, sure, of a Sure, but mountain. again, again, but the interesting thing was uh Alex warned me, you know, cuz he he, he 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 said, "Listen, that's right. Uh, he said things are this isn't something's odd here or I can't remember how he did it by text or whatever, but he said uh basically they're they're the theater, they're, they're all they're said, all upset cuz their best some friend that some died or something. Yes, friend they, of yeah, the no, year. it was. A, it's still unclear to me who this theater. guy was. It wasn't just the. Was she the owner manager? She's or? the event manager, right? But so, it, so the point it being was that everyone involved in right, the theater. But, okay, but the point were is, we in mourning. He sent me that, right? And I was like, okay, they're you know, someone's died, and uh, they're upset. Fine, and then I turn up. And immediately, it's clear. It was an Irish wake. <laughs> it was an I, yeah, yeah, exactly. What Alex was too, I think, probably too polite to say was, they're 
they're incoherently drunk. You're meaning you're not you're not sober enough to be responsible for a venue with 700 people in it. Brian, first of all, you're getting ahead of yourself yeah. in that you've not even been impugned, is that a word? Yet. Oh yeah. So save 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 your sure, defensiveness. No, no. no but no but, no, but the thing is that... right now I'm on your side. No, sure but sure in but the chronology sure, of the but story. Sure but the interesting thing was I felt that immediately but I swallowed it. I thought let's just get through the gig. Because I took, and this, there are so many little details that are great. Because when I, when I turned up, right, I walk into the green room and I get, I, all I've got is Alex's warning, which is, I just thought, well, fine, there, people are upset. I'll, we'll tread on eggshells. We'll be nice. You know, was, I, I didn't think, oh, fuck, batten down the hatches. We're going through fucking the hurricane. So I turn up at the green room and there, and Ben there, Ben's there, Ben uh, Elwood. Elwood, yeah. Elwood. And he's sitting there. On the on the sofa in the green. Oh, I confused with the other Elwood. Jeremy and fucking felt like a so, sorry. So, I'm sponge brained. Sorry, the Elwoods. So he turned up. I turned up, and he's sitting on the sofa with this lady of blonde hair. And I actually just thought, oh, I didn't know you were bringing your girlfriend or whatever, Ben. And then it's then it becomes clear that no, she's somehow attached to theatre. And I thought, bear in mind, we'd had a couple of theatre experiences recently, and I just thought, oh right, so you're the th- the green room attendant who union rules say there has to be a green room attendant at all times or something to open the door for Doug. Yeah. That, that, that type of thing. Yeah. That's where I thought she was ultimately. Mm. And then I bumped into the same woman you bumped into and I immediately go, Oh wow. You're hammered. Like you're really, really hammered. So that's kind of where it started. Okay. Yeah. Let me, let me give you my backstory. I had, Rented that place across the street, little tiny apart hotel directly across the street. All right, good. I can be here for three days. I don't have to fucking worry about anything. I have everything. And I actually worked on my act. And (laughs) this sometimes is a deficit because, all right, I'm at the end of my act. If you're a comic, you know, when you're, all right, I'm ready to just fucking tape this shit and put it out. But now I'm writing more shit. So I'm writing new shit. I'm writing shit about the Asian tour. I'm writing all sorts of stuff. I think I'm being professional. And what happens is I go in with a bunch of new shit plus an hour and 15 minutes of the shit I know. I did two hours and two minutes mostly rambling. The crowd is fucking out of control. The guy is fucking yelling at me from the front. A guy up in the second tier. I I, I threw him out. I listened. Alex taped it. I listened to it the next day. I listened to 36 minutes out of two hours and two minutes. And at 36 minutes, I just... Like I'm heckling myself going, get to the fucking point. I throw a guy out, probably a little quick to pull the trigger. Uh, this guy that kept yelling, but you know he would have kept yelling. Yeah. And I, I had him thrown out, and I could see Alex's fucking gangly corpse waiting to... You don't have to throw people out here like you do in a lot of places. Mm-hmm. You just walk them out. Sir, you have to go, okay... The guy's putting on his fucking shoes. I'm like, are you still here? He's, <laughs> and I look up. He's, he's putting on his shoes. Like he took off his fucking shoes. He's double nodding <laughs> to watch the show. Like it's an international flight. He's going to kick back and fucking splay up. Uh, one minute, put on. And that wasn't the first time I had to give people shit. For putting on their shoes wasn't the first time that we have pictures of people. And I only see the ones in the front row. Two people in what? What is it? Eight shows, seven shows we've done. Two people dead asleep in the front yesterday before the show in Perth. Guy tweets 930 in the morning. 
In honor of Doug Stanhope's show tonight, I'm cracking my first beer. <laughs> 9.30 a.m. Yeah. Oh, you're going to be in perfect shape to be a fucking decent audience <laughs> member at a fucking 9 o'clock show. You try to take a picture of that. We got one guy I get a picture of. You try to take a picture of that guy. It was way too blurry, way yeah, too you didn't dark. Have a flash, but you said there was other people dead asleep in the back. Another That's guy it. came up to me uh, just while he was smoking and said, "At some stage, I'd really like to talk to Stan Hope and just apologize for falling asleep." last show in Perth four years ago. And I was like, I don't think he cares. He'll probably just find it funny. By the well, way, just, just, <laughs> just, just to go to get this back onto the, the this called the, the Sydney dissolution. No, no, I, I'm going that way. I know, but the, the, inter the like, interesting thing was when that whole Alex throwing the person out was occurring, because it was Alex that was throwing him out, that's when I got my first real sort of like heebie-jeebies about, wait a minute. Alex is about to throw someone out of a, a venue and there's literally no staff other than Alex in the entire arena. He was the only per like the venue itself had no one in the room. And he is engaged in an act which has, forgive me, legal consequence. There is something going on. And I, that's when I started to, the hackles started to raise, raise in me going, where is the fucking management of this? Brian, you have to uh, pull down your pants a little bit on this and admit you're a fucking hammered, too. Well, when I wasn't hammered. I was, <laughs> I was drunk enough that I shouldn't be trying all this new material in a volatile audience. I mean, there was hecklers and talkers. I mean... When I, when I say heckler, you, you know my audience. They're heckling on my behalf, but they're still hecklers. They tell us about the thing. Where's Bingo? Need yeah. the beer? <laughs> just yelling shit as though it's a conversation. Yeah, I know. And I'm I'm just bleeding new material. I just get to the fucking point, Stanhope. Yeah. So it's it's a, it's a it's too. Fucking cloud fronts creating a nor'easter or some shit. Mm. It's I'm bad, they're bad. Staff is fucking drunk from a Mitzi Shore wake of their own Mitzi Shore. But you're fucking hammered. Too. I'm not hammered. Definitely not. You're not pretty... spilling drinks or anything. Yeah. But the, <laughs> point, is that, but the point is this. Though. The point is this though. That it, like. Uh, uh, I, it, it's a big deal though when you're a venue of that size and literally Alex there's literally no one of any responsibility and what's interesting was the woman in question she, that was the first time when she came up to me after that had happened because I was trying to find people to help and uh, she came up to me afterwards she found me and said I'm really sorry. There should have been people. Uh, should, I, I feel bad. I, we should have had people. And it's like, okay, it's, it's been dealt with. We're good. Let's just keep going. You know, let's just keep going. I was not, I was like, let's just get through to the end of this now. All right. Uh, unless you would chime in at this point, I would like to know because I was on stage for the whole time just trying to fucking say jokes oh yeah i was having my own problem uh -huh. saying funny material <laughs> succinctly i had my own thing when i got off stage i walked through the door to the green room and there is the drunk woman much drunker <laughs> if you can imagine it <laughs> Yelling at the staff, there's like three or four people of her staff saying, and the manager is not allowed back in here. And I assume she's got a problem with the manager of the venue. I just want a cigarette. So I come, Ben Elwood says, do you know what happened? <laughs> like, no, I just heard her yelling at her manager or about her manager. She goes, no, 
She's talking about your manager. <laughs> She's talking about Hennigan is not allowed back here under any circumstances. So I light up a cigarette in the ladies' room where she told me I was allowed to smoke sitting up on a fucking stair in the ladies' room window outside. And then he starts to tell me about the fucking you, Hennigan, demanding that Alex throws out the manager, her, she's the manager, you were telling him to have her removed from the venue. No, I, I mean, I ended up going, I, 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 no, I didn't, I went, I didn't just use Alex, I went to the venue, and this is where I was, this is where, this, this is where things went awry. Hennigan <laughs> tries to throw out the manager of the venue from their venue, because he's my manager. Because, because... It, I was, there were so many little things that, okay, I'll tell, it's, there's so many little things you don't know about, which are so much are very funny. And tell her verbatim wanna, wanna, to fuck off. I, I, hang on, <laughs> Alex, t- t- tell me what he told you to tell her. Okay, well, <laughs> I can't remember at what point, but at some point during the show, Brian comes to me and says, you go back there. And you tell her to sober up or fuck off. (laughs) (laughs) And so I go back there and put on the diplomatic sort of hat. This is, (laughs) this is, uh, uh, this is an expression that Bingo hates, but. That instruction is not in Alex's wheelhouse. <laughs> <laughs> you tell it to sober up or fuck off. <laughs> um, how do I say this like <laughs> Alex would say this? So I say something along the lines of, oh, it might be best if by the time Brian gets back here, you guys are sort of back in the office or some other area. And she's like, what did he say? I I don't want to say it. You can tell me this because she's been nothing but lovely to me the whole night. I didn't get any evil vibe from her. She was almost to a Me Too level where you could see she was a a, (laughs) a, a, a very attractive, what they would call cougar age. Yes. But she had that look in her eye like, oh, my friend's dead. I'm going to fuck someone younger than me. And then she realized, oh, you're my age. How about someone else? But you can see she's the kind of lady that would be drunk and grab your cock (laughs) and say something cougary. That lady. So she says, I I can take it. Just tell me what he said. And so I said, sober up or fuck off. You literally told her what I said. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do that for? What are you, a fucking moron? What the fuck? <laughs> Go ahead. Well, I can't Why remember. would you do exactly what he commanded you to do like an animal? I don't know what got into me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... You were feeling like saying that anyway. I was getting to that point. <laughs> I said it nicely. I just wanted the scapegoat so of what happens? saying it first. What happens? Is this where she goes ballistic? I didn't really see much of her after that. Okay. Okay, so now you've exposed your incompetence. <laughs> that would explain some of what happened next. Because I go backstage uh, just to fucking... I think I was trying to charge a phone or something. And she literally comes at me like, do I have a problem with you? Do you have a problem with like, like, But in that oppressive way. Where do like, I have a problem with me? I mean, yeah, do you problem yeah, that, myself? Like, and in that, but in that oppressive way where she's too physically close that I can't touch her and say back off like I would to might I might do if it's a smaller dude. <laughs> but uh, but you know what I mean? She was like really like in your face, as they say. She was doing that to me when she was friendly at the beginning. Right. She's and, like, right, my, you're going to go to a bar and, and with again, me. I, I just and re- she had a tits out. And I just, repeat, I just repeated my thing about, I just said, hey, everything's going great. I just want to get through the show. I'm here with my client. I just want us to get through the show. Do you have a problem? No, I just want us to get through the show. Good, but uh, excuse me. And I went back into the, the the theater. And and then I think there was a third time 
I, again, I went back next time. Went back in the room. She was even worse. Just there was a huge change from when I first saw her that night to when you guys turned up. Like they were drinking nonstop. That's that the night. thing. She wasn't. It wasn't like they were stopping drinking. No, no, no. It's an Irish way. You got to keep going till they fucking the memory of their dead friend yeah, is out of their head, and they're it's so, all the police. They're all so Irish. But. <laughs> I'm saying Irish wake because I, I think that's it. the point is they're fucking just I get off stage. Now I'm hearing the whole story. I have my own problems of yeah. having people thrown out. <laughs> I did a two hour and two minute fucking set that had like maybe an hour and ten of material in it. Like it was a bunch of fucking waste and riffraff and fucking hecklers. I was as bad as the hecklers were fucking me up. It just. So I don't know any of your problems. I just know when I get off stage, my manager has been thrown out of the place for trying to throw the manager out of the place, which is hilarious to me. And I'm smoking with Ben Elwood and we're having a fucking good old time. And then she is just shitting on you to me. Your manager, you should think twice about him and. Then I just go back to the ladies room to my smoking area with Ben. And then she comes in and then she turns on me. She loves Alex and Ben and points this out. This, you, everyone has to go. This is over. You're fine to Alex. You're fine to Ben Elwood. You have to go. Wait, when did you turn on me? I, I said, I'm on your side. I turned against Hennigan all. First of all, at some point, you have to admit you're shit faced because at that point you're texting. I'm back in my my oh, that, room that point across. I was back here, yeah, was across the yeah. street. Yeah, yeah, we're all fucking hammered. No, at that point I was pretty. By that point, I was fairly sober. But here's the important point: uh, you, you haven't heard what happened with Ben Elwood, have you? With he fucked her. No. <laughs> oh, let's spread that rumor though. Because, no. because, and again, I, this, this, this. On the night I was there when when this this conversation took place, but it, but it obviously like just diminished compared to everything else. But he comes off stage. She's there with the blonde chick about about more soon, and she literally is like, "Cause Ben's hey Ben did a f hey two things Ben did a fucking, fucking brilliant crushed. job. He crushed." He was, and this is like, I hate, I said this to him on the night. I said, Ben, this is going to sound incredibly condescending, but you are so much better than you were four years. It's like, you, it was like a different guy. Mm. And he did a whole, he told me that he basically gave up comedy for a year and just went away and said, fuck it. I don't need it. All the right. point being, he crushed. Uh, let, let me, uh, because that does sound condescending. I know. I don't know what he did last time, but I know I love him. Right. It's like when I read a book, I don't retain shit. I know if I liked it or I didn't. I know I loved Ben Elwood, but what he walked out to because of your introduction, which Not I go, oh, that of... might have queered the audience. Like, I go, uh, hey, uh, this is a, a local comic. Uh, Doug loves to work with local comics. And he hopes they'll suck so he looks better. That's what <laughs> you told I, me to say. I, well, I can <laughs> say that word. The audience knows it. But you uh, fancy it up where I think that audience thought, boo this guy. Like, I go, stop doing that introduction. Like, that was a funny one a couple nights ago. He walked out to Heckles and he just started fucking slugging people. It was almost like Bill Burr's famous philadelphia yeah, show it was brilliant 13 more minutes fuck you yeah, but brilliant. only for the first and then he got into material that crushed yeah he was fucking devastating so he comes off stage i'm sitting there you weren't there uh, uh i was sitting there on a standing standing there in the green room he comes off i, I, sh I shake his hand like, that's fantastic fucking drunky mcskunk bag the manager lady <laughs> why do you have to use those words <laughs> why 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 do you have to, why can't you just say the c word she literally did the amateur audience takedown 
on Ben Elwood after what he'd done. Ugh. That's what you never heard that. That's what no, you no. I, I'm on. I'm. I'm. I was gonna say I'm on both your sides. No, I'm against both of you. You <laughs> should not get thrown out of a fucking show. You should be a diplomat. Chad Shank could have fucking talked that woman down and no made her a way. fucking nice lady. No way. Oh, Chad Shank. Come oh on. no. Oh wait, wait, wait. Uh, furthermore, I know this for a fact. I'm not trying to I'm fire not, you yeah, and hire no, Chad Shank. That would this. cause more I, problems. Here's, a very, <laughs> here's something I know for a fact. Chaley will agree with everything I have said. Yeah, no, <laughs> Chaley wouldn't have done better than you on this. So, But you know what? Chaley wouldn't have had to hire him. Chaley would have done that, what he does. No. Not in a Chaley for, doesn't not, hire someone. Not in a foreign country. You can't do that. Legally, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're my theory. In Our theory. theory. <laughs> in theory. Also, anyway, here's the other funny bit this, that Ben found out. The the blonde woman who's a cropped up throughout this story, right? We're talking about the blonde woman who looks like who isn't Kelly, the manager, uh, not Galligan, Kelly uh, Overracker from Vavum. She was in the green room most of the time. Yeah, I just like to overhear these conversations like a fly on the wall. So at one point... She looks like Vavum Kelly. Uh-huh, right, so at one point, uh, eventually, you you work out that she's not... Uh, she doesn't have a job there. Right? She's not actually... She I thought she was a spy. Right, so, you, <laughs> so she doesn't... She, and so... Uh, um, and... Again, this, this for me the whole thing. This is this cuts to the whole thing about uh, like <laughs> what they thought they were doing by trying to run a show when they're have also having a wake, and all, why they're even in the green room. Why are you in the green room? You, you know, this is a four wall situation. We have rented your venue. You don't have a yeah. right to be here. True. We have rented your venue. Go away. This is not an improv situation or anything like it. So. Eventually, I over the course of the evening, I, Ben tells me, "Oh yeah, see that? Cause I, I've been trying. I kept. I think I might have said to him at one point, is she meant to be getting us ice? Does she work here? What? And you know, I, I couldn't work out who the fuck this what. And and Ben says, I still don't know who she was. Ben says, oh, um, I think that's actually like the, the 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 the." The ex or the lover or whatever of the person that died. <laughs> and I went, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're telling me they thought the best place <laughs> for the person they all love and cared about to be taken care of was in the green room of Doug Stanhope. They just plop her down there like a bag of groceries. <laughs> She was very nice, that that lady. Yes, she was. She was. I just want to be a fly in the wall. I love... She was listening to me and Ben talk shit, and she loved to hear about it. And the other funny thing... She what? would not toast us over, uh, like, well, here's to your lost loved one. And I go, well, how explain about... Explain that. Uh, well, how about uh, our lost loved one? Who died that you know? I go, fucking have, my friends. <laughs> she wouldn't toast her. right but she was nice that was that fucking crazy and lady. then the other oh thing that ben God. told me was <laughs> this is a great little detail apparently one of the reasons they were so upset was because they had this vision of how the evening would go that you would turn you would turn up you'd be this quirky comedian we'd all they'd all we'd all get along and they were going to take us to the pickled possum afterwards <laughs> oh that's uh, were you in the room that's probably where she said and afterwards i'll take she, i wasn't there. she was uh they were threatening ter- uh, she's gonna take me to that pickled possum <laughs> possum wherever and you're gonna get as drunk as me she was she was saying ah, how long have you been drinking and i said well actually i've only been drinking since like six thirty because mm-hmm. I I was working on my set, mm-hmm. which I shouldn't have done. Yeah, because I shouldn't have been using that as a fucking open mic. Do the fucking hour and fifteen that you know, Stanhope. Don't fucking. But and she goes, I've been drinking since eleven thirty, and afterwards you're going to the <laughs> right, pickle possum. possum. <laughs> you're going with me, and you're gonna get drunk. And blah, blah, blah. 
and the other thing Ben said, because Ben, uh, which he talked about in, in, in his in his uh, intro to himself when he's on stage, is that, like that that's the cinema, the venue where he grew up and where he went. He was he saw all his the great films, Jaws, Close Encounters, whatever. He saw them all in that venue, so it meant a lot to him to be performing there. <laughs> and he said to us, "That woman is exactly this neighborhood. She is like." <laughs> And I don't know what neighborhood it was in Sydney, but she, he basically said, yeah, the way she behaved and everything about her was this neighborhood. Yeah, well, that's He's spot it's on. our neighborhood in Bisbee, too. You, <laughs> we can find a, uh, several examples yeah. of. But uh, you, you, you're catching someone at their worst, <laughs> which you know is probably their medium. Yeah. <laughs> But let's give her the benefit of the doubt that she was at her worst after a close friend's death. But that kind of drunk, yes, I've been married to it. <laughs> it doesn't get better, and it's probably <laughs> consistent. Yes. Mm. But earlier, if we just met her a few hours earlier, she would probably would have made a, a, a beautiful brunch. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and taken us to the pickle pulse. <laughs> What's dissimilar about that neighborhood though is, uh, I actually grew up there when oh. I was younger and, um, it's, it's a very upper class part of Sydney and a lot of the people there, especially the women sort of put on a nice act. So when they do get drunk, it's all, just all torn down. Also Mimi, endured something that night because what did i endure well as far as uh, your friend came oh that's right yeah oh, she geez. helped with the ticketing yeah, i know and the, but then she was disappointed <laughs> well she heard your bit on me too and she just took offense to it straight away and afterwards i i spent the night at Keep afterwards mic in your fuck i <laughs> I spent the night at her house and she got into an argument with her boyfriend and me and she was like, oh, he's just helping to perpetuate uh, men who think that they can just do whatever the fuck they want with women. And she was telling me about her Me Too stories (laughs) and I was just like, look, every chick has a story like that. And at the end of the day, the fact that he's satirizing it is fantastic because it just means that people are going to think about it in a different perspective. And I'm going to save this for a different okay. podcast because this has already gone on too long. <laughs> but I just, I, I, uh, I'm not even going to reference it. But satirizing, I don't know if I'm satirizing, I'm talking about yeah. it. I have 85 different beats on the Me Too thing, and I'm trying to figure out which ones are the most relevant. To, what do I keep in the fucking act? And it's, it's the most confusing. And it's been that way for at least 18 months before Me Too was a thing. I was already talking about this since Andy Andrist and his fucking, his pedophile thing and the people that try to, so I don't even know what the bit is, <laughs> but at no point do I try to fucking trivialize no. women who are not trivializing themselves. And let's, I don't, I don't want to talk about that anymore because <laughs> I don't want to fucking do bits on my Let, podcast. Let's just leave it on fucking Ben Elwood is great. Ben Elwood is great. <laughs> boom, boom. Faster his, fucking Ben his, his, won't hear. His brother, Jeremy. In New Zealand, it's just great. <laughs> His brother Jeremy Elwood is Jeremy Elwood, is he, uh, Jeremy going to be in fucking yeah. Auckland? Yeah, oh, yeah. good. All right, the, <laughs> the fuck, Elwoods of comedy. The Elwood tour. <laughs> I was thinking uh, uh, about doing a sober tour, like a short one, oh, yeah. and call it a tour to remember. Uh-huh. <laughs> since fucking Alex, <laughs> since you have told me all these stories from four years ago. I don't tour remember. To remember, that's very funny. <laughs> the tour to remember. <laughs> I like that. I didn't tell you when you were sober because I funny. thought you wouldn't laugh. I think that's very funny. <laughs> tour How to you remember. Going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we took a helicopter ride. That was a f- fun. Later. There, bye. <laughs> Room tone. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> 20 seconds. Fuck you, Chaley. <laughs>